But there's a lot of airspace to cover for Milro. It's caught! Touchdown, Alabama! On a fourth and a mile! 31 yards! Well, welcome to the SEC, Oklahoma. You've been there, done that. You've had some good wins, had some tough losses. Can you pull an upset this weekend? We're going to find out. What's going on, everybody? Christian Ballard, Ballard Sports Media, coming at you with Tidal Wave Talk, where we preview and predict each week on Friday. Uh, I, I'm just going to be honest. I, I was doing it on Fridays, uh, but now I just kind of – Clip it, upload it, uh, and just kind of let it instant premiere, which I, I really don't care. I mean, I, I just want to get it out for you guys this year. I think next year in 25, we'll try to get it on a regular schedule on Fridays. But uh, typically, it's on a Friday when we get this out. Today is November 19th as I'm recording this. This Saturday... Uh, The Saturday before Thanksgiving. I hope everyone has an awesome holiday. We'll talk more about that next week and rivalry week coming up. Obviously, Alabama gets the Iron Bowl with Auburn. Uh, I think Oklahoma gets LSU. You got teams like Georgia, Georgia Tech. You got so many great games. Tennessee, Vandy could be really good next week. Uh, The Egg Bowl, I could go down the list. But you can't overlook that for some of the games this week. Ole Miss goes to Florida. Uh, You know, Kentucky goes to Texas. That (laughs) Kentucky, (laughs) be careful. Uh, Penn State at Minnesota. But the big game uh, is Alabama at Oklahoma. SEC Nation, I know, is supposed to be there. And College Game Day, I believe, is also there, but I'm not entirely sure. Let me actually pull that up and double check. So, uh, nope, they are actually going to Columbus for Ohio State and Indiana, which is a really good choice. Uh, Of course, Ohio State has the Oregon loss, have looked amazing since then, getting wins over teams like Penn State. Uh, And, of course, Indiana right now is sitting pretty in the Big Ten. So, sorry, my computer's acting up, but if you guys can still see and hear me, that's great. So, we'll kind of continue and let this kind of work itself out here. Um, Alabama and Oklahoma have not met since the playoffs in 2018, I believe. If Oklahoma pulls this off, they will be bowl eligible. If the Tide lose, they will not make the playoffs. I don't think a three-loss team is getting in the playoffs. In fact, I know they're not getting in the playoffs. I was favored by 14 points. I I think it'd be a little bit a little bit closer than that. But I could see them winning by double digits, maybe a 10, 11 point game. Uh, I like Jackson Arnold. I think he's a really good quarterback. I think Jalen Milrow is a really good quarterback. The only difference is Jalen Milrow a little bit more mobile. Uh, Jackson Arnold, strong arm. Jalen Milrow has a strong arm too, but I think you take one in one category over the other. I think you take Arnold with the arm. I think you take Milrow with his legs and what he can do in the pocket, outside the pocket. As far as the receiving core, obviously everyone talks about Ryan Williams being 17 years old and everything. You got other guys out there like Jeremy Bernard or Cole Adams for Alabama. Um, and uh, he's, you know, Ryan Williams has eight touchdowns on the year, over 700 yards receiving, 40 receptions. And then you have for Oklahoma, you have Bar Sharp. 
39 receptions, 299 yards, and two touchdowns. So you look at this, uh, what what is there to like about Oklahoma in terms of what they do really great? They got one of the better tackles uh, and linebackers in the SEC and Danny Stutzman. They got Billy Bowman Jr. that leads the team in interceptions. He's really good. I like how the defense has improved under Brent Venables compared to what Lincoln Riley had. I think that Venables obviously being the D.C. at Clemson for a long time, he has learned. He has shown what he can do, and it's really paid off as a head coach. It started out kind of shaky in his first year, but uh, this last couple years have looked really, really good. I was kind of concerned about Oklahoma and how they would handle the SEC competition, and rightfully so. They're one in five. Some of the teams are really, really good that they're playing in terms of South Carolina, Ole Miss, Missouri. Uh, they did take care, obviously. I, I, I mean, they played Tennessee. They took care of Auburn, as has everybody else. But this just, I mean, honestly, this looks like another SEC loss. I'm not here to go ahead and predict that, although I think a lot of people are going to pick Alabama simply for the fact that they are a better team, but also just based on what we've seen from Oklahoma against in-conference competition. Uh, getting back to their defense, you have a lot of great players. You really do. Nobody has more than one and a half sacks. Well, there's one. Robert Spears Jennings uh, has two and a half sacks. He's got a pick, too. He's probably their best tackler on the on the field. He's forced four fumbles. He's recovered two of them. Um, you know, this is a, a really good unit. Kip Lewis, Billy Bowman, De Demonic Williams, uh, you know, Peyton Bowen, I mentioned, Kobe McKenzie. And, and there's just so um, – there's so many great, talented players on Oklahoma's defense. As a whole unit, it looks basic. It looks average. I'm not trying to downgrade their defense or anything. That's just kind of how it looks for me. I mean, it's not star-studded. It's also not terrible. It's kind of right there in the middle for me. But at the same time, I think that it's one of those defenses in my book outside of maybe the scoreboard. I can see where it has improved greatly throughout the season. Uh, I think the offense is what's having issues. I think against South Carolina, I mean, look, they had three field goals, 35 to nine, right? Uh, this this offense has some issues. They got good talent. Uh, J.J. Hester, Deion Burks, I could go down some of the receivers. Devontae Barnes, really good running back. Jackson Ardle, Michael Hawkins, whoever at quarterback has looked pretty good. But at the same time, like, the O-line struggled. Like, Jackson Arnold has 29 sacks, 29 sacks. I mean, we want to talk and sit here about Carson Beck's interceptions. How many sacks has Jackson Arnold took? How many hits even? That offensive line is suspect. You look at Alabama. They're a great team. They're a great program. It's a new era. They're doing pretty good. They are currently fifth in the SEC standings. And I remind you, not that I need to, there's no divisions. It's not like they're fifth in the SEC overall and they're atop the West. There's no divisions, and they're fifth right now. And both their losses are in conference. We know about Ryan Williams. We know about Milrow. We know about Jam and Justice uh, at running back. Uh, you know, we know about that. What about the defense? Lead tackler is Jihad Campbell. He's going to be one of the top guys in the draft, I would say. Maybe a day one, day two guy on defense, probably the at least one of the top guys to come off of their team on defense alongside guys like Malachi Moore. Damani Jackson leads in interceptions at two for him. Deontay Lawson looks really good. He's got two sacks. Jahad Campbell has five. Uh, Malachi Moore playing that back end. 
He's got two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery. Uh, he's picked off uh, quarterbacks two times this year. He's got five defended passes. I just love Malachi Moore for his leadership and his his just his character and everything to uh, to just lead this team. Just just really lead the team. Keon Sab looks good. I mentioned Damani Jackson. Uh, up front, the guys like Tim Keenan, LT Overton, uh, J.M. Latham, Jamarian Latham, Q. Robinson, Quay Rousseau, Jalen Mbakwe, King Mack is a transfer from Penn State, has not seen the field too much, but when he's out there, he seems like he's pretty good man-to-man coverage. I like the depth of Alabama. I just want to see more guys get action on the field. I don't know if this is that particular game. You look at the Iron Bowl next week, Auburn's down. It's going to be at Bryant-Denny. Anything could happen in that game, but let's say if that's one of those games where they're up big in the fourth, do you put some of those reserves in um, on defense? I know maybe they rest Jalen Milrow at the end of the game, but like, what about the defense? Can they put guys out there? Can this be a game? Uh, on the road at night in the SEC at a place like Oklahoma, they're not used to going. Probably not. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I still like Alabama to win big, but I think it's one of those pull away late type of games here. I, I really do. I'll go ahead and give a score prediction of 35 to 24 and say that they win by 11. I don't think they cover. So if you're betting on this game, at least if you want to go with my score prediction, I would take Oklahoma plus 11 just because not that Oklahoma wins. Uh, I think they could. <laughs> I mean, they really could. They could get win number six here. Uh, at home, at night, anything's possible. I think they give Alabama some issues. Getting back to Alabama's defense, they got Drake Crack Jr. and Yonze Pierre, Jeremiah Alexander. I could go down the list. There's a lot of really good guys. Sterling Dixon, they are loaded on defense with talent. I just – some of those guys are very young right now. You might see them step up next season, um, maybe next spring in the spring game and scrimmages and everything. A lot of guys look really, really good um, in spring. Uh, a lot of good reports from Kalen DeBoer. Uh, and I just – I look at this whole defensive unit for Alabama, and I think they could come into this game. They're going to give up some points to Oklahoma, but if they could hold them off in the end, I think that would be really good. I say a five-touchdown game for Jalen Milrow. Well, if he has five touchdowns, gets 35 points. Does he rush for three and throw for two? Or does it flip-flop? Let me ask you this. He throw three and rush for two. That's interesting. You never know what you're going to get out of Jalen Milrow in terms of the touchdowns because he does have Bernard and Williams, and he's got the weapons, right? And we know all about Ryan Williams. He's 17. He does this. He's so spectacular, yada, yada, yada. Jalen Milrow. Can use his legs and get into the end zone. He is one of the leading rushers in the SEC in terms of quarterback play and, and and touchdowns. Not sure if he's exactly at the top, but he's still up there pretty high. And he's going to be very effective. His legs could be effective this week. And I'm really excited to see what he has to bring to the table. So, anyway, that's going to do it for this one. 35-24 is my score prediction. Alabama goes to Oklahoma at night, and I think they could still win pretty big. I say they win by 11 points. Love you guys. Jesus loves you. God bless. And from a Bama fan, roll tide. Good luck to Oklahoma. Can't wait for this game, and uh, we'll see how it goes.